Well, hey, good morning, everyone. And uh, from Kit Kat and me. Got it right that time. Um, <laughs> oh, but Kit Kat doesn't want to be up, do we? Hey, do we? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay, he always wants to be in my business, but he doesn't want to, he doesn't like being picked up very much, you see. Hey, all right, so our little muddy farm trek, and we're off again. So uh, let's have at it, let's have at it, shall we? Let's just walk a little bit. Oh, yes, I was busy down this end, wasn't I? I was busy down the side. Just filling in this part. Just need filling in here. Excuse me, I'm going to add texture and whatnot as I go. This will just speed things up just a little. Let's not get a ridge on the edge. really would help me a lot. Okay, yes, this is getting there. That one there and that one there. I do, do still want to keep the the posts there at least. At least the uh, where they lurk.
being fairly rough with this at this point because I don't need to do anything else other than to just keep an idea of where they are. for the nonce. Right, T. Stop working with... See, this is kind of a first layer as such. Just want to start filling in the areas where there's grass, where there's mud, where there's where there's dry soil, wet soil, and so on, and then cast deep cast chatter. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. Establish that a little bit. After that, I can start to add a little bit of color. Um, I'm going to keep the color very subtle. I don't want this to become one big brown, yellowy brown piece of work. I want to uh, keep the color fairly muted. Again, there's the remnants of old tracks that have been obviously, you know, it's been a, 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 a tire has driven over here, tractor's driven over here, and quite some time back, and then it's kind of filled with water a bit, and then it's, but it's, but it's just starting to lose its, can't see quite the track properly. That didn't sound right. Um, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Never mind. Um, anyway, the track is still visible. Only barely though. Um, it's it's uh, so this. Th th just think about it. I mean, there's a there's a th this little bank over here. Um, it's got multiple layers because every time the truck, or at least the tractor drives through here, it leaves another slightly different set of tracks in and uh, on, on kind of the same spot, but.
rolling back and forth. Jeez. <laughs> I'm leaving this to be become fairly contrasty um, because this is this forms the basis of my shadow area, my charcoal work, and it is going to be prominent throughout in any case. Um, so, hence the the darkness of it. It's going to underlie whatever I put on top. Getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Righty ho then. Alrighty ho then. Let's see. Let's see about some colour, shall we? A little bit of. <laughs> what are my choices? <laughs> Yellow or brown? Uh, let's go with a. Mm. Let's go with a terracotta y kind of colour in places and see on the edge of the around surrounding the water uh, the watery spots the puddles which are there and this expanse down the bottom here um, in the foreground uh, the soil is 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 damp and uh, kind of between this terracotta clay look and uh, and chocolate brown and then we've got a more wheaty color over here in the dry in the dry areas uh, anyway and so just going to hint at it I want these colors Color always seems to, I mean, I do enjoy doing uh, purely black and white uh, pieces as well, but, um, so don't get me wrong, but the moment that color starts to, starts to creep in, um, the whole piece seems to change, It'll change gear, put it that way. Go with a chocolate brown. Again, you'll see, start to see why I've, I'm using. Um, very little colour really and relying more on the charcoal so the colour becomes just the hint the colour becomes it just turns it turns the piece into something more realistic believable whatever um, but just sufficient colour to um, to to help you to believe that the, the season, I mean, it's like winter, and and just that that earthiness of the of the whole piece and whatever. Um, I'm not explaining myself very well, am I? Um, nevertheless, nevertheless, you're starting to get the gist of my meaning anyway as I as I work. Um, And aside from the color then will be the contrast and and the line work of course as well and that will come later on um, with both black and white um, Conte and pastel some nice crisp line work that that traverses the piece I need something much paler than that I need to stock up <clears throat> that's what I do need and you'll see the other tool that I'm going to be using extensively of course 
as I always like to, will be my eraser. And that will it start to bring a lot of form and perceived detail, etc., to this piece. My little trusty eraser performs very well when it comes to depicting grass. I found This camp's always in the wrong spot. Yes, okay. Of course there are, as always, a medley of other colours involved um, to further enhance the, the winteriness. Select a few colours here. Okay. Slightly lighter terracotta here as well. <clears throat> and there's almost a, a very light almost to the point of being orange. I use that very, very sporadically. Just for that almost late afternoon glow. 
and I'll be using that quite a bit more I feel it's a nice it's a nice yes as I said it just gives that lovely warmth to the piece as well without being it making it so this frigid um, bland looking piece what um, just brings that subtle warmth to it which I shall employ to effect right um, for now that will do that will do and I'll leave these oranges for later This is more of a, a marigold, really. Again, I shall leave that for later. Um, we'll get on with these yellows and what am I looking for actually here? I don't quite know, you see. Right. I have a feeling, well, I'm pretty sure that, that the, what you're seeing, the video feed that you're seeing is lighter, much more washed out than what, than what this is. I'm, I'm, I'm working with some fairly vivid color here. Um, at least it, it, it happens like that, it seems to happen like that on my, uh, <clears throat> on my laptop. I might be, I might be wrong. Maybe you have a different color calibration that, than I have but it always seems to look very insipid some of my works when I'm on the on the video feed um, anyway it is, it is of no consequence but how are we doing for time oh still, still a fair way to go a far way to go. <laughs> Half an hour. Good morning, happy noisy car.
out. I'm now going to counter this yellow with a little bit of white. Um, and after that, then I'm going to start working with my um, eraser. So now this white I shall then blend. Yeah, like that. That's it. Hello again, Kit Kat. Just, um, I'm just kind of indicating now where the main, the, the, there's this long grass, long dry grass, um, kind of in the foreground here, um, in the middle ground rather, I should say, because everything is in the foreground really in this piece. Um, and I'm just depicting where the, the difference between where the short, the, the long patches are, or the long uh, clumps of grass are, and the shorter, the shorter grass as well. And then I'll work up the detail of the fence much later. Once I've established this, this whole section here of where the grass is. Otherwise I'm trying to work in between the slats of the fence and you know, it defeats the, it's very time consuming to go about it that way and not as effective. So I still have the the uh, semblance of the fence behind, um, underneath. I'm working over it with the grass as if the fence wasn't there, and then afterwards punch the fence forward. If you know what I mean. First of all, though, I want to just put some reddish terracotteriness. I really do make up words in my sessions, don't I? Especially with my adjectives. Mosquitoes are not welcome. Hmm. I think I also want to use a slightly more that one, that'll do. That's the one I want. It's a slightly more pinky terracotta. Um, in fact, it's exactly what I need. So you'll see what I'm, what I'm, what I'm on about. And I start to build this kind of medley of colours. Um, And what those do is 
is they add body to the piece, almost like you, you can imagine a, a uh, Theresa May advert. <laughs> um, Revlon, um, where you've got different different kind of hues um, add body to, to, to hair uh, and colouring. I, I, I don't have that problem myself um, or have that challenge or even the question of it. But, uh, <laughs> but just having watched ad nauseum countless advertisements for hair products over the years on TV and what have you. Yeah, well, you know what I'm on about. So you get this range of different colors of hair dyes and what have you. And, uh, and they all show this a different, a different, whether it's from hazel to at least chestnut to, to blonde and what have you. But there's this what they always term body. Uh, and that for me um, is in this subtle build-up of, of changing hues because if you can imagine on a on, on an egg <laughs> it's, it's my, this is my breakfast by the way <laughs> anyway um, on an egg, so this is an ostrich egg, so uh, you've got where the light source is, you've got a, a it's, it's, it's lighter over here, it's probably a lighter cream color, the, the whole egg is cream, and this is what I was, I've been saying times before, um, the egg is cream, we look at the egg, we go, it's a cream looking, cream colored egg, but actually if you look at the, the light play on this, on this is, there's now a reflection off my sleeve here, that's just, that's just catching the bottom edge of the of the uh, sort of a, a, an orangey glow at the bottom here, and there's a, there's a white where the highlights are, the lights, and and so on. So there's a constant change between from the light source to where the shade. Uh, it applies all the time, so you get subtle where the sun is being cast. Excuse me, I'm, I'm going to sneeze. Am I? Maybe. Maybe not. Oh. Anyway, um, so the light is being cast from uh, kind of that, that that direction over there, um, and it's getting quite low the sun. And so it's it's it's, and of course when it gets lower it goes more orangey and what have you. So. You get those kind of orangey yellows instead of the stark brightness of, of a midday sun, for example. And and therefore your shadows then are contrasting completely to the on this side to what's on that side. So this is why I'm 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 explaining it in a roundabout way, but I'm using this I'm using color in a way that describes that 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 full change. In fact, in dark, in in, in circumstances like this, um, you will go from. I mean, even on a blade of grass, you'll go from from that from the yellow right through to blue, dark dark blue in shadow. Anyway, just a, I'm using, for my deep shadow, I'm using black. I'm using charcoal and, and black, etc. But, uh, for the purposes of this piece, though.
But suffice to say that, that what I'm seeing here, what I'm translating, is not all just yellow grass. Otherwise, you know, yellow and black. No, I want to, to give it that, that dimension. That, that, that soft, gentle glow of late afternoon sun. And even this, though, I'm going to make a lot more subtle when it comes to using my eraser. I'm just depicting it for now. I'll go over this first with my charcoal once again, and then start with my eraser. <coughs> Well, first with white and then with my razor. <coughs> that would do for that for now. <coughs> Aside from the odd kind of detail of the of these some of these um, more prominent track features, uh, tire track features, as well as the fence. Aside from that, <coughs> it's just doodling, doodling away happily. Doesn't require much thought. And you'll see now why I always maintain that I like to I like to see a, an artwork evolve as as one. Um, so start with the with the with with the with the composition, obviously. Then the contrast, black and black and white, light, the dark areas first, and then. But the whole piece, not just working on a section by section basis, because I want to energize the whole artwork, not. Um, <laughs> oof, this is where I have a, a great deal of difficulty in explaining why. Why I do it this way and why it's important to do it this way. Um, when you, when you. Or out there. Let's say, let's say you're out looking. You're out in the in the country, or at, at the seaside, or somewhere. You're not just taking it in, little, little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. You're taking it it all in. You might your your focus might be on a certain spot, but your peripheral vision takes it all in at the same time, and tells the story of what you're feeling, what you're smelling, what you're seeing. Um, what you're hearing, um, it all happens together. Yes, in a moment, but, um, but it needs that 
wholeness in order to tell a full story, not just little bits. And uh, I guess once an artwork is complete, that energy that I'm putting in now, of feeling the entire piece all the way as I build layer upon layer, um, emerges in the completed in the completed artwork. That's why I like to do to work on it as a whole rather than section by section. Because to me there's more there's far more to it to, to an artwork than than just the depiction of what I'm seeing my reference image or copying something or whatever it is there's there's energy involved in it and that energy is like it's like it's like taking a a spray can and just shoot it you know you know you, it, it covers the whole surface it, it, and even if you're spraying in a spot it will spread out that's how I like to work and that's why you'll see me darting across the page sometimes and and a little and a little spot over here might catch my eye and I'll work there suddenly and and then back again and so on just building it letting it emerge as it wishes to slowly and all at once and then of course the uh, the focal points and what have you coming out later on. I'm leaving certain certain areas, specifically the puddles, um, to work up later for a little bit of drama, you know, a little bit of sense of occasion and, and excitement and anticipation, that stuff. And also for me, because I like to see something, because I think that this water, the puddles will, will actually just bring this whole thing, and the whole meaning of this piece together, and why I did it. <laughs> why I chose to do a puddly farm trick. So now I come back with my charcoal and as I've explained before when you when I'm using charcoal on top of um, on top of uh, chalk pastel it doesn't take in the same way as it, as it does here if I'm working on the on the black sheet of paper so but it, it just it just adds a richness and a, and, a, and a depth of tone where it's needed After I've, after I've used my eraser, tomorrow, <laughs> by the looks of things, um, and then I'll add more charcoal again, and so on. start this in and work back. I always seem to neglect the far right hand side.
when I was listening to to my uh, uh, after my after my sessions, I, I'll get a couple of screen grabs and what have you from my from the video and listening to the video and, and spots and this sounds like a, sounds like a steam train going through the countryside. Hey. This is getting there quite nicely, if I say so myself. Yes, I'm quite happy with that, with the way this is starting to turn out. of minutes left. coming together rather well. Oh yes indeedy. I'm going to quite enjoy working on getting the chunkiness of these of these tractor tire tracks. Tractor tire tracks. Um, Because they really are central to this piece. And 
and quite at odds. They like a, 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 a they like a, a nice discord. Uh, these tire trucks, because um, otherwise it's a fairly you know there's grass, there's soil, there's you know a, a fence eventually, but those regimented lines. Kind of what and marching across the you can imagine this this tractor going back and forth day on day all right guys i think uh i think for today we're all but out of time Yes, okay. Happy, happy. Happy, happy with this piece so far. Yes. Right. So, that be it. <laughs> thank you for joining, people, and uh, thank you for sharing the little button down the bottom of your screen. I do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. I always appreciate it. And as we start to build this little YouTube channel of mine, which is standing at 26 people at this point, um, I'm most grateful. And uh, let's uh, let's bring it up a bit. I think what's what's my what's my goal? A million? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, have a fantastic day, further guys. Oodles and oodles of toodles and. Uh, Catch you again, same time, same place tomorrow, I hope, and um, and we'll take this to the next level, infinity and beyond, as as Bud Lightyear likes to say. Anyway, bye, people. See you tomorrow. Bye. And don't forget to do 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 doodle. <laughs>